Hey, deserving listeners, a lot of you have been asking me to watch Big Ed on The Single Life, so let's watch. I'm going to react to it. And she got pregnant with our daughter, Tiffany. But we just started to fall out of love. And then I was unfaithful. It was a one-night event, entanglement. And um, that breakup almost destroyed me. All right. I don't know if we knew this before. So we are learning that he says he didn't have a serious relationship before he got married. I don't know what that says about him, but we'll, we'll keep that in mind. He's also saying that during the marriage, he cheated on his wife. He says a one, a one night thing. So, you know, I, I don't know what that says either. Infidelity is unfortunately quite common in human behavior. So I don't know what that says either, but we'll keep that in mind. Teddy, what did we decide in my age range? 29 to 48? <laughs> okay, good. I'll take that as a yes. I typically connect with younger women because, I mean, I don't consider myself old. So this is something that a lot of men do on dating apps. And of course, they're free to do so. On these apps, you can give your age range that you're looking for. It's a well-known studied phenomenon that men will aim a little high, if you will, and will think that they are able to compete, I guess, on a level that maybe they don't actually. <laughs> now, maybe he does, I don't know. But my point is, is that when dating apps will actually compile a lot of data, one thing that they do find is that men will absolutely average the age range that they're looking for is is drastically lower than one would expect. You know, if you're 45 years old, you think you'd be looking for someone in their 40s. But on average, 45-year-old men, heterosexual men, will be looking for people in their 20s and 30s, which most people would say, is, is that wise? Why wouldn't you look for someone your own age? And of course, we could speculate as, as to why. You're free to fill out the dating app however you want, but it does kind of reflect a, a, a aspect of gender and sexuality and the way people think that, you know, isn't necessarily wise. And there's a lot of unwise aspects to dating behavior. Maybe that's what I'll be com commenting on as we go forward. FaceTime for about four months and I bought a ticket and I went to the Philippines to see her Meeting Rose for the first time in person, that moment was one of the happiest times of my life. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I think I forgot that they had never met in person before that point, because a lot of couples on this show, they will have met beforehand. But yeah, I, I, was that how it was? They had never met in person until this moment. That's interesting. You're so beautiful. Oh, oh my, my God. I thought it was love at first sight, but Rose's age was the least of all the factors involved that caused our relationship to fail. All right, so this is gonna be interesting to hear his narrative as to why their relationship didn't work out. I'm very curious to what he is going to say. If history uh, is going to be repeated, he will have an interesting point of view, one that I wouldn't share. Now, he knows his relationship with Rose way better than I do because he was in it and I only saw bits and pieces on a reality TV show. So what do I know? But let's watch. Oh my God. Rose, what is that? I did a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, mouthwash. Just your breath is not um, it's pretty. Wow, they're really hitting all the highlights here. So <laughs> that dead rat scene I thought was delightful. The <laughs> laugh that Rose had. I think it's a dead mouse. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I mean, when in Rome, right? You're <laughs> When in my town in the Philippines, you're going to run into a couple dead rats. In fact, the rat wasn't entirely dead. I, I never noticed that it, it kind of moves. So let's, let's rewind that. It's involved that caused our relationship to fail. Oh, my God. See, it kind of, I don't remember it moving in, in the, when we watched it last time, but you see it's, it's, it's still got a little life in it at some point. So that's, 
I mean, it's a you know, it's tough situation, but uh, it, I don't know. There, there were there were some comical moments in the Rose and Ed storyline. There were some tragic moments as well. Rose, what is that? I did a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, mouthwash. This your breath is not um, pretty. So I said this last time, I think, which is, you know, if your spouse has bad breath, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, you have bad breath. When I have bad breath and my wife, uh, you know, we're, um, you know, close to each other, <laughs> let's just say, and she will say, eh, your, your breath. And I'll be like, oh, okay, you know, and I get a breath mint and vice versa, uh, by the way. <laughs> and, you know, it, it happens, no big deal. But how, you know, you have to be able to gauge the other person's response. My wife knows that I'm not sensitive about that. My wife knows that I want to be told that. And I'm not sensitive about it. I don't have bad breath very often, but it's normal if you just had a, I don't know, a steak and onion sandwich <laughs> with a lot of garlic. It's to be expected. It's fine. Uh, a lot of Japanese American food will have, will pack a pretty hefty punch <laughs> in the mouth breath department. But um, how do you do it? And what we saw in this scene with Big Ed was a way of communicating to Rose that was hurtful and didn't say, hey, honey, just wanted uh, no big deal. You know, there's a way. Instead, he, one, waits for the cameras to be there. Two, he goes to the store and gets all these uh, materials assuming that she didn't actually brush her teeth, assuming that she didn't even know. But we did find out from her that she did know because she has some kind of condition. I can't remember what it was. And she says, yes, I brush my teeth all the time. I don't need to be given tooth, a toothpaste and a toothbrush as if I'm a child. So that was really hurtful to her. So again, it's the, it's, there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't like the fact that you have bad breath right now. Can you please use a breath mint? Uh, inherently there's nothing wrong with that, but how do you communicate it? And this was just kind of the beginning of the end, really, with Big Ed in terms of the way he talks to her, the way he treats her, the way he thinks about her. I want two kids because that's my dream. I'm telling you now, I don't want more kids. Right. So that was another highlight of that season where... Big Ed was, I keep calling him Big Ed, he calls, I just call him Ed. He was giving the impression, I think even just flat out saying to Rose that he did want to have kids because that was a deal breaker for Rose. And then when he told her later on during their time together that he didn't want to have kids and she's like, I can't, one, that's kind of a deal breaker for me, two, why have you been leading me on this whole time? Because that's a major life goal that I have is I want to have more kids. And that really, you know, that really hurts me. And and then he kept piling on all, all these excuses of just like, well, hey, you know, it's expensive and I'm old and, and da, 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 I already have kids. I've moved on. You know, it's like, OK, you can have your preference, but how come you've been leading me on this whole time? So. Uh, and and he didn't seem to really internalize the deception that he had been uh, committing to to Rose and didn't seem apologetic about it. When Rose broke up with me, I was heartbroken. And I remember reacting during this moment that he legitimately was hurt and sad. I think that he has feelings like anyone else does, but he has some interesting defense mechanisms that shoot him in the foot and I think prevent him from really understanding other people when they are hurt by him. 1959. Shoot. We met in September, he got married in April. Oh, that's awesome. My mom met my dad and they got married in, in Tijuana and then they came over to the States. They had six kids at 25. My dad was a very um, church every Sunday, no talking back, no sassing. Back. All right, I always like to learn about the history. So they had a number of kids, one, two, six kids. And sometimes that can result in a wonderful childhood with 
lots of siblings to interact with. Other times, it can result in the parents not being able to attune to every children to every child sufficiently, meaning that some kids will be treated in a way that's neglectful emotionally, maybe not abusive, but they have to fend for themselves, or there's a parentified sibling that isn't so great at parenting the younger kids and resents having to take care of the younger kids, and some issues can happen from that. Uh, like I said, there's plenty of situations where six kids, everything's fine, but I'm, you know, I'm glad to learn a little bit of detail. Maybe we'll learn a lot of background that'll help us hypothesize about his potential relational traumas. They had six kids at 25. My dad was a very um, church. So I missed that detail. The first time they had six kids at 25, I thought he meant they started having, it sounds like they had six kids and they were 25 years old. So that's going to make it hard also, right? Young parents tend to struggle more on average than older parents. You know, when you age immature, you get a little bit more aware of your emotional reactivity. So you have, you're 25 years old, you have six kids, and you're a new couple. That's, that's a lot of strain, but you know, maybe they managed it well. Every Sunday, no talking back, no sassing back. I can't tell you how many times I got my mouth washed out with soap. Everybody. Okay, so I don't know what that says either. It's certainly not a practice that is done today. I think I think my parents might have done that to me. Well, I think I actually, I, I remember as a kid learning about this. If you're younger, you might not have heard of this, but in the in the old days, they used to wash kids' mouths out with soap if they, if they used a swear or something. And I think what happened when I was a kid is I heard about this happening to other kids and I was curious about it. So I think I actually washed my own mouth out with soap to see what it was like. And I remember thinking it wasn't actually as bad as it sounds. It's not good, but it wasn't as terrible <laughs> as it sounded. But anyway, so we're learning that Ed had his mouth washed out with soap by his father a lot. What does that mean? Does that mean the father was was a good parent and also used this tactic that is out of date? Or does it mean the dad was overly harsh? I don't know, let's watch. He thought my dad was the nicest and funniest person that they'd ever met about eight years ago. He was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. It was really hard when we did lose him. It's hard on my mom as well. They had a, such a special relationship. Okay, so we're learning that he lost his father about eight years ago, and that was hard for him and for the mom. That's always important to know as well. I don't know what that says, but let's keep that in mind. True love in my life. I love you, Bonnie. I'm more than ready for love. And the perfect kind of woman that I'm looking for, I think number one would have to be kind. Um, number two, she has to be hot. And that's H-A-U-T-E, which means she's cute with a sense of fashion. <laughs> All right. Um, so he's looking for someone that's nice. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good quality to look for. Um, a lot of people would do well by putting that at the top of their list. The second is hot. H-A-U-T. Uh, okay. You know, it's fine. You want to be attracted to your partner. U-T-E, which means she's cute with a sense of fashion. She has the love to make love, of course. Um, physical, she needs to be my body type, which is, you know, short. <laughs> hey. All right, he listed off a few more of his uh, wishes in someone. I, If I were his friend, I would say Okay, yeah, you want to be sexually attracted to them. You want them to be appealing physically to you. You want them to like to have sex with you. And you want them to be nice. Can, can we expand on the personality aspects here? A sense of humor, um, you know, life experiences, this kind of thing. I think that would, he would do well by expanding that a little bit more instead of just focusing on physical aspects. I don't know if that's what he's doing. I guess we'll find out. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.